Oh, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, last week I was fortunate enough to go on the Catch More Media uh, Facebook page and do a live, uh, an hour long live, and one of the most common questions was about my feeder rig. So I thought it'd be a great idea to show you exactly how I tie it and how we go about it and all the stuff you need. So firstly, one of the biggest things that we need to sort of get our heads around is why we use a free running feeder rig. Um, there's many options available out there, but I like a really simple running rig. Um, it's something I've used for a long time, it's something I've got a lot of confidence in, it's something that I've worked hard on as in to refine it, refine the setups and stuff like that just to make sure that it's 100% right. I personally prefer a running rig because I believe you lose less fish. Um, if you can iron out the problems that you get, sometimes get with tangles and, and stuff like that, then I just think it's a, it's a better rig. Um, the helicopter rig is undoubtedly the one for fishing in island and big, big waters and stuff like that where you just got to be 100% confident in what you're doing. But for most of my fishing, the running rig is the one. Now it's a super, super simple rig. Um, the components have been refined over the years and it, it, you don't hardly need anything. Um, the, the main one though, for my, in my opinion, is you need a fit line. So what I tend to do, I'll, I'll use like four pound mono on the reel or five pound mono on the reel and then I'll use a big shock leader. Something like this, 15 pound core and barber line, um, belt and braces stuff. You don't really need it for the strength, it's more to do with having the, uh, the stiffness in the mono when I tie in the rig. So let me just talk you through that rig. So, what I like to do, I tie all my rigs on shock leaders. Um, I use one metre shock leaders an awful lot, um, just so I can get this stiff part into my rig. Um, I will use a seven metre shocker if, if the situation arises, if I'm fishing long distance, stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm using one metre shock leaders that I just tie onto the end of my normal feeder setup. So all I need to do, is take, I, I like a pellet waggler swivel, they're the ones with a sort of round round bottom, um, I'll show you some close-ups of that. Um, that goes on first, dead simple. So put your swivel on the line first, as you can see there it's on the line, and then all I'm going to do is thread my little rubber stop on there. Like I say, it could be a stop, it could be whatever you want, but a flat edge is a good idea. So now we've got a swivel and the little rubber stop on the line. Now the next job is to tie a loop in the end of the mono in the end of the mono. So just a simple overhand loop. I tie in with a figure of eight, but whatever you're happy with. Doesn't have to be too small. Now because this is thick line, I need something just to pull it home. So I just use whatever I've got laying around really, put it in, pull the loop tight. Now the next bit. Now this is the important bit, and it's the twizzled section of the twizzle boom. Now um, what I like to do is keep it to about four inches. Three to four inches I think is perfect. Um, I've tried all different kinds of length booms and whatnot, and I just I found that a short stiff piece is more effective than a longer one. So all you need to do when you're doing this is twizzle finger that way and twizzle the other one in the opposite direction. So as you can see, it twizzles together, pull it apart, twizzle it back and you'll get a really tight twizzle boom. So just keep doing it. That's it, that's about perfect length about the length of my finger I suppose like that can you see that that's about as long as I want it I've got quite long fingers but you get my drift all we need to do now is tie that off another figure of eight loop and there we go perfect there you go you've got your perfect twizzle boom section now all I do is put the rubber stop down to it like that simple as that that like I say that could be a stop or two stops um, but in this instance, I'm using a rubber stop. It's something I've just been doing lately. Um, trim that tag off. And that is it. That is the, that is the rig complete. Um, it is as simple as that. So what I do, I, I pull off a metre of this, bar, uh, this barbel line. Trim that. And there we go. I've got my one metre shock leader. And there is the rig. Super simple stuff. It's got a twizzle boom that's nicely thick. It's got that rubber stop there, if you can see that. Twizzle boom, nice and stiff. And everything is perfect about that, in my opinion. Um, the flat edge means that when the feeder is on the line, it kicks that boom away at a lovely sort of angle. That rig, to me, is perfect. Um, it's just a case of then loop to loop in your claim font to the loop, just as you normally would, and then away you go. Now, you may be saying, what about feeder link? Why haven't you got feeder link on there? I'm a big fan of feeder links, personally. Um, what I do, it's something Lee Kerry showed me, um, I just tie a loop basically of line onto my feeder 
and then just attach it to the link swivel. It's as simple as that. I don't have any fancy links or anything like that. Not that I, don't, I think they're bad or anything, but I just like to have the option of not using a link, which is why I've got a swivel on the line. And then if I do need a link in the session, you know, the bikes aren't as, as smooth as I'd like. I'll try uh, putting a feed link on one of my feeders, loop a bit of line onto a feeder, and away you go, you can clip it on. But if not, I can just clip my feeder straight onto the line, like if I'm bream fishing, because um, that, without a feeder link, is, is tangle proof. So there you go, super simple rig, simple components, simple to tie. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Comment below, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff, and we'll see you again soon.